Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity multiplayer tutorial. Today we'll be looking at the new official Unity networking solution that was released a couple of days ago. So for those of you who are wanting to get into networking, or those who have been waiting a very long time for Unity to release their own solution, that time has come and now we can start looking into it and playing around with it. Hope you're looking forward to it, so let's get started. So a couple days ago, they released the new version of the Unity engine, 2021.1. And along with this, they also released the first version of their new multiplayer networking solution. This is a normal game objects networking solution. You don't need to learn dots or ECS for any of this. And this is built on top of ML API, which they acquired quite a few months ago now, I think. And they've been building on top of that ever since. The package is in preview at the time of recording this. So it's not recommended for you to use this in a commercial product just yet but it is recommended that you can start downloading it, playing with it, and following along as they update it over the coming months. They're also developing this open source like ML API was originally, so the community can actually go in, look at the code, make contributions, and report bug fixes and issues. I think that's enough for the overview, so let's have a look into what they've given us to play with. So we've got this landing page here about multiplayer networking, and I'll put links to all this down below. So the first resource is the API and documentation, so you can go and see how it all works, how to get started, and also if you ever get stuck, you can refer back to this. We then have the transport, which is the lower level stuff about how to actually transfer data over the network, but you don't really need to worry about this if you don't want to. And then the boss room, which is a sample project they've built, and it has pretty cool features by the sounds of it, though it's not out as of making this video, it will be out in about two weeks, I think, and I'll be doing a video about it then. You'll be able to download, get access to all the code and play the game yourself. They actually have a page here for it, so you can look a bit more into it. They explain what the game's about, saying that you'll be able to download the dungeon level for character classes, imps and a boss, puzzles, art and assets. You get access to all this stuff. You can do what you want with it. And it comes out on April 7th, so I will be doing a video about that when it comes out. Another page I'll be linking down below for you to have a look at is the roadmap page, which you might want to keep an eye on because they'll be showing changes to the netcode core itself, the transport layer, and then the documentation and samples. So you can see here what has been released already, what they're currently working on, and what is under consideration. And of course, like it says here, if you didn't find what you were looking for, you can submit a new idea. So this is a very valuable page to keep an eye on. And then back on the landing page, we can go ahead and click get started. And you'll see here that if you want to use the old versions of ML API, you can click here to go and learn about that. But if you want to start using the new versions, then you can click this button here and it'll teach you how to get started. So instead of just reading down the page, I'll be actually showing you how to do it visually. We'll be doing it together. Obviously, if you want to just follow the text on the website, you can go ahead and follow that link if you want. But let's get started. Like it says here, make sure you're using 2019.4 or newer. Even though it's just been released a few days ago, they always support older versions up to some extent, so as far back as 2019.4. But as 2021.1 just came out, I'll be using that instead. So let's open up our Unity Hub. Make sure you've got 2020.1, or sorry, 2021.1 installed and create a new project on that version. And we can call it whatever we want. So I'll call it new multiplayer video. And we can use whichever default template we want. I'm going to go ahead with 3D and hit create. Once Unity is opened, we'll head up to the window, package manager. And right now you can't actually find it in the packages because it's not at that point yet where they're ready to put it in there. So when you want to add it now, you go to the plus button, go down to add package from git URL and paste in this URL, which I'll be linking down below and then hit add. And while it's installing, I'll show you quickly. We have this page here, which I'll link down below. And then this is the URL you want to paste in. So right now it's version 0.1.0, .0, but of course, when you're watching this in the future, it may have changed. Once it's finished installing, you now have everything you need to start creating your own multiplayer game. So to save us some time in this video, I'll jump to my other project where I've already followed the getting started, and I'll go through and show you how it's all set up and explain how the code works. And then in future tutorials, we'll actually be doing some coding together. So here I am in the project where I finished following the getting started. We have a button to start as a host, where a host is a server and a client. And then we can start as just a client or just a server. So in the editor, I'll start as a host, so I'm playing on my own server. And I have this button to move, and it will pick a random position on this plane. And it just teleports me there. And if I go over to this built instance that I've made, I can then join as a client to this server. 
and it's actually put me behind there. So what I can do is instead of moving, I can request a position change because the server is the Unity editor. I'm just a client over here on this build. So when I actually want to move, instead of physically moving my character, I will tell the server I want to move. It will then move me and then come back to me and then I'll move. So I hit request position change and it moves me. And we can see over here this happening in real time with a very, very slight delay. And obviously it works both ways. So we look at this player now. If I move him around, he's now, let's say, in the back over here. And I jump to my build and he's there in the same place. So it's a really simple example where the server can move and the clients can request the server to move them. So for this to work, they just have two scripts. They have the hello world manager, and this is just handling the UI. So the buttons at the top left. And all it basically says is if we're not a client and we're not a server, that means we're not running at all. So it displays these buttons where we can obviously choose to start as a host, start as a client or start as a server. And on this else, so that means if we're either a client or a server, AKA if we're connected to a game, then we show the status. So it just tells us if we're a host, a server or a client, and then we also get the buttons to submit a new position and they change the text based on whether we're a server or not. So if we're a server, it says move. If we're not a server, it says request position change. And then it basically says, go through all the connected clients and get ourself. And once it gets ourself, grab the hello world player component and called move. So the hello world player component is this script. And what it has at the top is a synchronized vector free which means that as it's set up here, only the server can write to this value, but everyone can read to it. So if I, the client, tried to change this, it just wouldn't work. But if I, the server, changed this, it would work and it, all the other clients would see that change. And they use this to store the position of the player. And network start is just like the normal start method inside of Unity, except it's called when this object is ready to start being networked. So there has to be some setup under the hood before that's ready. And this will be called on both the server and the client. So it says, if we're the server, pick a random position and put us there, and then set the value of this vector free. Otherwise, if we're not a server and we're a client, we then want to submit a position request, which calls a server RPC. And what that server RPC is code that is executed on the server but is called by the client. So the client calls this method, but because it's a server RPC, the server then actually runs it. And what the server does is it picks a random position on the plane and sets that as the value. And when you set the position's value on the server side, because it's a networked variable and everyone can read it, that means that all the clients will see that value update, meaning in the update method, when we update the position to be that value, it will actually work. So when the server changes the vector free, the uh, networked vector free, then all the clients will see that and they'll update their position. And that's how they do the syncing of the players when they teleport around. So this move method is called on start and when we hit the button in the UI. So I hit that button, it calls move and it will move. Like I said, if from the server, we just do it. If from the client, we request that the server does it for us. That's the difference. And then back in Unity, in our prefabs folder, we just have a player prefab. It's a capsule with a network object component. And that's just a component given to us. We stick it on any object that needs to be networked. And then we have our hello world player script. And then um, up here, the hello world manager is just somewhere to hold the script that handles the UI. So we have the UI at the top left. If this wasn't here, that wouldn't be there too. So that's just something to hold that. We also have the network manager, which is the thing that handles actually starting up the server, connecting as a client and keeping that all running. That's the, the bulk of our networking. Now there's many, many settings on here that you really don't have to worry about. I've not changed pretty much anything on here apart from uh, the networked prefabs. So I clicked add and I dragged in my player prefab and I checked the box to say this is the default player prefab. And what that means is whenever a client connects, uh, the server will spawn in one of these player prefabs and assign it to that player. So we all have our own players. So yeah, that's a quick overview of how this all works. Obviously, networking is a lot more advanced than just a normal single player game. But I hope over the coming tutorials where I go more in depth in the code and go slower with you, that I can help you understand a lot of the things that might have been a bit overwhelming in this tutorial. So be sure to let me know down below what you want to see next.
Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you found this video useful, and if there's anyone else you think that might find it useful too, feel free to share the video with them, it would help a lot. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to Francisco Lira, Liz Kimber, Andrew Williams, Bidodai, Benjamin Hilder, Cat from Garfield, Chris Diplock, Coulter, Dario Alvarez, David McDermott, Evan Maxey, Jake Nixon, Yoris Sletter, Casey, Katinka Mom, Malvin, Mike Troop, Rack, and Sam Marcus. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my patrons down below. If not, there are links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by checking any of those out or following on any of those, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.